when it comes to delivering presentations, the key thing is to tell your audience what they want to know, not what you know. Get the difference. What they want to know, not what you know. So I used to tell my clients to start by finding out who are their audience. What do they know about the subject? What basic knowledge do they have as regards the subject? And what do you think would entice them? So you have to find out, are there some group of secondary school students or university professors? Or are they business oriented professionals? So it's up to you. Because knowing exactly who are your audience will give you the edge to develop your content in terms of the depth of it and the technical detail of it to suit exactly what your audience will require. So this is a quick tip for you. In today's video, we're going to talk about three more tips on how to spice up the presentation so that you will appear much more elegant, presentable, and respectable in front of your audience. You will sound like a professional. You will speak with confidence. And you will be treated like a professional. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Rashid, and welcome back to Epic Mentorship. If you are new here, consider liking and subscribing to our channel to keep enjoying related useful videos from us. So why don't you jump into my PC to learn about these three tips that I have for us today. The first tip that I have for us today is on how to use 3D model animations, okay? These are highly handy and useful whenever you want to bring in graphics to keep your audience or to attract them to stay connected to you. Like I said in the previous video, a picture is worth a thousand words. So graphics are extremely important to capture your audience to stay connected, to get the whole picture of what you are trying to say. Okay. So it's a new feature that is recently introduced in Microsoft PowerPoint. So to get there, and to use this very feature, you have to come to insert over here. Then you navigate to 3D models and you come down to this uh, drop down menu and then you can save from stop 3D models. OK, so on clicking on it, you can see a range of uh, models over here. You can see clothing, furniture, industrial and you can come down here and see even electronics and gadgets. OK. I think I can go for electronics and we can search from the variety. Okay, there are a series of them. You can choose anyone you like. I'm so fond of drones. I can choose a drone and we can insert directly. All right, so this happens to be animated one. Okay, this is an animated drone. You can have actually have a different view. You can increase or decrease the size as you wish and you can have a look at the different view preset views of the drone okay you can look at it from different angles right and see how it behaves okay from different angles and on your own you may decide to use this control and control the angle you want to view for example i want to view the front or you can uh, particularly zoom to a particular direction that you want you can do that okay and then you can use this pan and zoom also you can pan okay once you click on this you can zoom up to show a given detail okay you can zoom in to see clearly uh, the detail of the drone or you can go to a particular point that you may want to see maybe you want to see one of the blades okay so you can easily come clearly to see that particular blade and what is there and how it operates so this is extremely important to have the animated 3d models to showcase some ideas for your audience actually all right you can see these uh, animals 
Let's see this dinosaur and how it looks. All right, so this is animated as well, all right? So you can see, you can move it to different axis and have a di different view of it. Okay, you can have this by the side of your presentation and to help you to attract uh, your audience. And you can apply the point to zoom and you can zoom a particular location of it, all right? All right, so you can have them also in the form of pictures, okay? This chair looks good, you can insert it. All right, so you can see the chair, very nice. You can view different direction. Okay, you can increase the size. You can decrease, you can view different angles of it. These are preset angles to have a clear view of how the chair operates and how you can sit and enjoy yourself. All right, you can equally use the zoom to point to zoom. And then you see a particular part. You can zoom into any different kind of location. Okay, so this is a very interesting feature to introduce in your presentations 3D animated models. Right, so the next tip that I have for us is actually how to use the eyedropper. Eyedropper is extremely handy whenever we are dealing with coloration and the likes of it. Okay, so for example, in this in our, on, our screen, on our screen, we can see about three different shapes carrying three different images. But let's say we want to bring in these shapes to PowerPoint branded color. Okay. This is a branded color of PowerPoint. You can see the coloration at the top here. It's a brand of PowerPoint. Okay. So we want to make these colors to appear just like the brand with exact coloration. Okay. So all you need to do is to, let's say, select these uh, shapes. Okay, I will come over here to sh shape format. And then we can come over to shape field because what we want to change is the shape, the, the color of the field. So we can click on the drop down and we navigate down here. You can see eyedropper, okay? Once you click on eyedropper, it will ask us to select a particular place where we want all these colors to be converted. So assuming I select here, you can see all the shapes have been converted to this color. So this is extremely a handy tool that you can always use. You can choose any place. And for example, let's say we add an, a shape outline to this particular images. Let's say we added an outline. And we want the outline to take a different color within the brand, okay? So all you need to do is to come still over to shape outline and move down to eyedropper. Once you click on eyedropper, we move here and click, and it's going to take exactly the shape of the other color within the brand. Eyedropper is available on different forms. You can check even on shape effects. For example, you can come on to glow and you come and check more glow options. And you can see down here, we have the eyedropper. Okay, so once you click on it, you can select a particular color and it will glow the image or the, the shape using that particular uh, color. So that, for example, we choose this, this coloration. Yeah, you can see it glows using that particular coloration. So it's a very important, handy tool that you can use to actually bring in the graphics of your PowerPoint slides so that you can have excellent presentation and attractive presentation whenever you are preparing your slides, right? The last tip that I have for us today is actually how to bring in a to-do list into your PowerPoint presentation. So as you are preparing your PowerPoint presentations, having a to-do list by the side will enable you to work efficiently so you can know which and which points you have covered and which and which points you need to improve on or you need to work on later on. So it will help you to be extremely efficient and to complete the task on time. The to-do list is an add-in, so all you need to do is to come over to insert and then you go to get add-ins. Okay, and you come over here and you type to-do list. All right, so you can see it here, the first one, to-do list pro, is what I usually use. And you click on it and then you can just add just like that, okay? So over here, for example, I'm preparing this presentation and I need to work on some sections to bring in some data to put in different sections. But I need someone or I need something to use to remember that I need to put some those details. So I can come over to the side here 
and put details to add. So I can add the items here, put in more quotes. So these are items that I want to work on that under these details to add. So while I'm working, it depends whether you are a research student, you can have this same to-do list while you are writing your or you are preparing your PowerPoint for your seminars and conference presentations and all. So it will help you to uh, identify areas that you need to work on directly. Once you open the PowerPoint, the, the presentation, you can easily see your to-do list where you stop and where you, what you need to work on. So once you cover a particular point, for example, I'll put in the, the quotes that I needed to put, I can click on it and it will take it off. Once I finish on this, I, I can click and it will take it off and take it down. So I have the, the valid ones or the existing tasks to do. And whenever I'm done with a particular task, I can always come over here and click to remove it. Click to remove. Okay. It's a very, very easy to use again. All right, guys, thank you so much for being with me up to this point. And I do hope that you have learned something today. If you do, kindly feel free to share with your friends. And don't forget to always hit the like and subscribe button to stay connected with this channel for more of our useful videos. Remember to find out about your audience. So I to dig in as much information as you can about them, about the technical knowledge, the, the depth of basic knowledge that we have as regards the subject. Because knowing this will enable you to tailor your presentation towards exactly what they need to know. Remember the key point. It is what they want to know, not what you know that you should tell them. Because that is the only way you will create a lasting impression in their minds and they will stay connected to you from the beginning to the end of your presentation. So try as much as you can to learn about these graphics and apply them in the next presentations so that you will appear confident in the midst of your audience and you will be treated like a professional. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye. It's...